what's going on? Welcome to part two of the Hawk Zero Report Returns. Now this section of video was originally intended for my previous video, but due to some uploading issues, um, it didn't get uploaded properly, so I had to re-edit and repost. So that's what this is all about, okay? Now I got a few albums to show and I've got a few 45s to show. So let's let's show a, let's show I'll start off with a single that I got. I got Los Cycles. They're a Peruvian garage punk band. And uh, they have a legendary status as uh, being proto-punks in 1965. They're also a mixture of sort of garage rock and surf rock. They only had 645s originally back in the day when the band was together. And uh, this is a reissue of their second 45, Demolition. Now, of course, it did not have a picture sleeve. This is a... This is a new picture sleeve put out by Munster. It's a Spanish release, and there's the hype sticker. But I just love that photo. I had to get this thing. So cool. They reproduced uh, the design of the original 45 label with the Munster name on it. Now, I believe the original label name was Des Peru. So, limited, come out about a year ago, limited edition of 300 copies. So, very cool. Now, the first album I'm going to show is, it's a reissue comp of rarities and uh, previously unreleased material. Uh, recorded between 1973 and 1975. Now, in case you don't know the Nervous Eaters, they were a garage punk band out of Boston, Massachusetts. And uh, they were around about the same time as the Modern Lovers. So, um, this is Steve Cataldo. And he was the front man, he was the, the singer. And uh, for Many, many years, nobody knew who St. Stephen was. This album came out on Probe in 1970 in the U.S. And uh, it's, psych, pro, uh, it's a prog psych. Really cool album. And there's the label. And Gay Fold. So it turned out the St. Stephen is Steve Cataldo. And uh, here he is right here, with a mustache. So... Yeah, I was really glad to get this. There's a, Ner there's a Nervous Eaters Eaterville Volume 2. Um, I don't have that one, but I did pick this one up and it's, just, it's really cool. So I did get a couple of Nervous Eaters uh, singles. This is an original copy of their first 45. Probably regional. I, I, I don't want to say it was local, but it was probably regional for back east. Because it doesn't really seem to be super rare compared, compared to their second single. Uh, this is just really good. Loretta's just really good garage rock. And uh, the B-side is a uh, Rock With Me. Here's the back of the picture sleeve. So, uh, these don't go for a ton of money, but their second 45 does. And uh, I will probably never own an original copy of that unless I get extremely lucky. But I did, I did pick up this reissue. And it's on the Peniman label out of Spain. And it's just the same label that put out that album. Uh, this came out in 2015, four years before the album came out. And uh, it's got this, uh, they reproduced the uh, sleeve, if you, call, if you could call it a sleeve. <laughs> so this is a lot more punkier than the, the Loretta 45. So um, these go for like, with the picture sleeve, really nice shape, 
over a thousand dollars. I was looking on Popsite. I was blown away at the value of this thing. But great, great single. Yeah, these guys just didn't put out a whole lot of material, but they recorded a lot, luckily. Okay, the next one is an original German copy of Hell Preachers Incorporated. And uh, this is an uh, exploitation psych, but it's really good exploitation site and this this label Europa they're uh, they're they're an exploitation label in Germany so look they even put out the animated egg on this label so yeah this is really good man I, I, I think it's better than animated egg uh, it's largely instrumental but it does have a few vocal tracks which is sort of heavy bluesy psyche rock and uh, you can hear a little early 60s deep purple influence with this band and I read that it was kind of rumored that this was kind of a deep purple put together album by some of the band members but um, but I also but that is probably not true. But I did read from another comment that could possibly be members of Lucifer's Friend. So whoever it is, it's it's pretty good. I got a nice clean copy of it. They're not super valuable, but they, they go for a chunk of money. So a really nice uh, vinyl and probably like, oh, a VG Plus cover. So very cool. This next one is Clear Spirit, uh, 1969. This is the band's third album, and look at the cover. Have you ever seen one that nice before? I mean, usually when you see this, it's got a lot of wear to that black cover. When I found this in the wild, it still had shrink on it, but the shrink was so bad that I went ahead and I tore it off. But wow, it's got it's got a little bit of wear, but man, it's it's pretty nice. I've been looking for a copy like this forever. So wow, that was a nice find. Okay, I got one more uh, album to show, and uh, it's the first album by the band Dust. This is 1972 hard and heavy rock. Power Trio out of uh, New York, and uh, they only had two albums. This is the first one, and look at that! Look at that killer cover. Sort of doom, doom metal, proto metal, gothic. You name it. That's what it is. Super cool. Now this guy is Mark Bell. And he was the band's drummer. And in 78, he would become Marky Ramon. And before the Ramones, he played in Richard Hell and the Boy Box. So this is on the pink uh, Kamasutra, Kamasutra label. So, pretty good album. I really, go, I really like it. It, it rocks. I think I like this better than Granicus. Because it, it just it just rocks more. I really like it. Now uh, throughout the, the the video couple videos that I did, um, I was I've been always playing this in the background, and it's hashish. And uh, this was a studio project by a guy that fronted the Stomach Mouths. Uh, in the early 80s, they were a garage, pack, a garage punk band, very 60s um, oriented, it's like 60s garage re revival. So this was a project that he put out um, several years ago in 2016. Um, 
It's a Swedish pressing with a, according to the sticker, um, the sticker was made in Germany, but the, the vinyl itself was pressed in Sweden. It's on the Swedish Sublimable Sounds label, which is the same label that put out the reunion album for the baby grandmothers. Um, this album is probably three stars. It's not as good as the baby grandmother's album by a long shot, but um, it's pretty good. It does get a little disco-y, but it's definitely got that kraut rock 70s vibe to it. Um, it's it's uh, basically, uh, it's all instrumental, but very, very cool. Picked it up in the discount bin. It looked interesting. I got a good deal on it, so I went ahead and grabbed it. Okay, that's going to do it for the showing. And uh, I did get a VCL package from Deadwax 66, so that stuff will probably be included into my next video. Um, I don't know when that'll be, but um, I, I'll, I promise you it won't be five months. So uh, everybody take care, and until then, stay safe and uh, be happy. Later.